Welcome back. Super excited moving forward. In this very important lesson, I'm going to talk about the basic fundamentals of what Scrum is and a lot of the terminology as well. So you understand not only the definitions, but also when I use these terms frequently without throughout the course, you'd be able to understand exactly what we mean. So before I actually begin, right off the bat, your homework is to take a look at all of these terms that I'm going to talk about in this lesson and kind of memorize them. So what is Scrum? A couple of definitions that I picked up. There are several others, but fairly similar to each other. Scrum is a framework within which people can address complex problems while productively and creatively delivering products or services of the highest possible value. So that's just the basic definition of what a Scrum is. The other definition that I found useful was regarding the Agile management. So Scrum is also an Agile project management framework used primarily for software development projects with the goal of delivering new software capability every two to four weeks. So the reason why we have the Agile management here embedded is because in Agile, we deliver chunks, right? In different iterations, we deliver a piece of software by collaborating the internal teams, external teams, as well as the customer. So that's why Scrum fits perfectly well within the definition of the Agile Project Management Framework. Here's the overview, and I've been using this throughout the course as well, but just to give you an idea of the Agile Scrum Framework, we start with the, of course, there's a product owner, that's where all the inputs are coming in, right? from the executive, from the stakeholders, customer, users. The product owner is the owner of all of these. And then of course we get to the team, which is responsible for executing the actual task or project at hand. And the role of the project manager is to manage not only the project, but also lead the team and keep the team motivated. A Couple of new terms that I'm gonna talk about next but just briefly here, product backlog and the sprint meeting. That's a stand-up meeting that we have. Then we have the sprint backlog, and then of course the iteration cycles of one to four week sprints. You could have a daily meeting, or stand-up meeting called the daily scrum call with your team members. Just go through them. Of course, the project manager does not lead this particular meeting. It's typically the scrum master that leads this meeting. The PM just takes notes and makes sure everything is recorded properly, answer questions, take a look at the issues at hand, and so forth. The burn down charts that I'm going to talk about later also are also used within this particular framework. And then, of course, we do the sprint review with several cycles of iterations, get to the finished work, and then look at the retrospective as well. So, just to give you a high level overview of what the Agile Scrum framework entails. Here's the Scrum flow specifically. Okay, So coming from the product backlog where you have the priority list of all of the requirements, they are added to the functional requirements that are divided into smaller tasks, right? And that must be performed during this particular sprint. So your sprint could be maybe again one to four weeks or once per month or and so on. So depending on the type of the project that you're actually working. So every day you meet for about 15 to 20 minutes. Some meetings are half hour. I've done meetings, you know, scrum calls for a little over about half hour or so. Again, that's for complex projects, but you want to be able to uh, just hone down to 15 minutes as your stand-up meeting. Each team member answers basically three questions in this particular meeting. And you as a project manager, you need to ensure that members stick to this agenda. For instance, number one, what did you do yesterday? Two, what will you do today? And three, is anything in your way or any issues that's bothering anyone? So that's just a specific scrum flow as part of the agile project management. So getting more depth into scrum roles and artifacts, these couple of terms that may come across, and I'm going to use this throughout the course as well, but you're going to see this quite frequently. On the left side, you'll see the Scrum roles, which is the product owner, then you have the Scrum master, 
The Scrum Master, by the way, is responsible for the entire Scrum process from teaching, implementing, and ensuring that everything runs smoothly during the stand-up calls. And of course, then you have the role as a Scrum team. The artifacts are simply just the documentation, the issue log, maybe the product backlog, which contains or entails ever-changing prioritized list owned by product owner, maybe a spreadsheet example. So any issue that you log, for example, whether you're using SharePoint online to log these issues or Smartsheet or Excel and so forth. The other artifacts are the burn down chart and then the sprint backlog. Scrum roles, some key definitions that you ought to remember because you'll be throwing at you know certain words, you'll be throwing you know certain words at yourself quite frequently. First, the product owner. This person is simply responsible for maintaining the product backlog and ensures the stakeholder's interest. This person drives work by writing stories, and we'll talk about what stories are later, and decides when they're done. So for now, just, just think of a story as a user story, right? So a user would work at a software or develop a piece, for example, during the Scrum, let's say, one, one iteration cycle. And that user would typically write a story. Something's missing, maybe a missing functionality, maybe a UI design is incorrect, and so on. So the product owner, again, is the person responsible for maintaining this particular backlog. Then we have the Scrum Master. The person here is responsible for ensuring the Scrum process is used properly and also facilitates the resolution of issues raised by the Scrum team. It does not direct the team, but in fact, acts as a facilitator. Then you have the team itself. And by the way, uh, Scrum Master also resolve issues specific to the team, whereas the project manager simply records these issues to be resolved later on by the PM himself or herself. Next is the team, cross-functional group of people, simply just the development team, maybe the QA team, the BA team, and so on. And they are responsible for managing itself to develop the product, right? Or the software or the actual project itself. They also break down stories into tasks and execute them. And finally, we have the stakeholders. And these are the people for whom projects are completed. They are directly involved only during the sprint reviews. So as a project manager, you need to have effective communication through the stakeholders as well as the team. Here are some Scrum traditional components. Once again, just key definition descriptions, a one line description of each of these words. So you ought to kind of take a look at them and kind of memorize them because, again, these are quite frequent if you're getting into Agile or moving from waterfall to Agile framework, you are going to come across all of these. And the more you know, of course, the better you can inform the relevant stakeholders within the organization. So a sprint, again, is a time boxed work period to complete planned stories, two weeks for us, for example. Typically, I use that in my projects as well. Then you have the stories, projects that result in a discrete deliverable and can be completed with a short time, hours or days. And I talked about what that was. Then we have the tasks, of course, the epics, large initiatives that have multiple stories, product backlog. These are just a list of priorities, stories, right? Or tasks or user stories per se. Spring backlog is the detailed list of stories for the current sprint. Then you have the sprint planning, daily scrum calls, sprint retrospective, in which the full team session is held to evaluate previous sprints success, both in deliverables and in process. And then finally, you have the deliverables, which is just the output either by milestone or by epic completion. So just a few buzzwords that you need to kind of go through as your homework, just again, memorize the definitions of each of these. Okay, sprint backlog. I wanna talk more about this, this is important because the sprint backlog defines the actual work or activities, tasks that a team defines for turning the product backlog it selects for that sprint into an increment of potentially shippable product functionality. So, Typically, you work, the development team works on a certain piece or activity or a task. And then, of course, the backlog is brought in. 
the team looks at the backlog and then of course turns that particular information or task that was done yesterday or a few days ago into a fully functional product. And this task should be about four to 16 hours each, highly visible, real-time picture of the work owned by the team because you may have several teams, right? You may have one team working on a certain aspect of a project, the other team working on the other aspect of the same project and so forth. For instance, in my experience, you'd have, uh, let's say you're doing a development, software development project. You have one team working on the UI side, right? They're just designing the user interface. Whereas the other team is writing code. So now you have two scrum teams, right? That you're managing. The sprint backlog is typically maintained as a spreadsheet daily by a tracker or responsible individuals. You can also use SharePoint or any other tool that you wish to use to keep track of this. The burn down chart simply visualizes the correlation between the amount of work remaining and the progress in reducing the work. So on the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, you have the days in sprint, and of course in the y or the vertical axis, you have the hours remaining. So the x is, of course, the date, and y is the hours of work remaining, and the updated according to the sprint backlog. So this chart is updated as you progress through your backlog items. And this kind of just shows you visually, right? Just the correlation between the work remaining and the progress in reducing the work. Perfect. So in summary, I'd like you to visit this particular website, scrum.org forward slash scrum dash glossary. There are several other definitions, of course, as you get more experienced, get to know more about the scrum and agile framework you need to kind of go through all of these glossary items and just kind of understand these definitions. I've only hi highlighted the core definitions, the core concepts of Scrum, but again, this will give you a further idea, additional practice, so that you can become better at this. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, post them in the discussion area. And with this, let's move to the next lesson.